Hello, can you hear me and can you see my avatar? Can you hear me guys? I know there's a delay. Okay. Well then, hello Sarge. And 10 will watch the playback probably. So thank you, 10, for stopping in and giving me a thumbs up. Hello, Sharon, Nico, and Christine. Hey, Sapphire. Hey, Junie. Hey, Patty. Hey, Babs. So... Before we get started, we're waiting on people to come in. Um, they did find the pastor's wife um, gone, um, deceased in her car. Hey, crime. And um, so I hope all the accusers... Um, You know, and all the rumors and everything that were going around feel kind of bad. Obviously, the husband didn't do anything. Hi, IVI. Um, but then there's a missing girl um, from Indiana. I have not seen any updates on that. Um, I did ask Ivy Rose to send me something because she... I had mentioned something to NCOG. Um, I really enjoyed Kat's show tonight. We may get into that when we talk a little about Delphi. Um, crime is going to be on later. We're going to talk about social media and Delphi. Um, oh, I've got to send her a link. So while we're waiting um, for more people to come in, I'm going to do that real quick, guys, if you don't mind. Um, so did I say hello to everybody? That Hey, Chris. Just let me do this real quick, guys. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so it is their crime whenever you um, want to, you know, click on it. So we are going to be talking about Gary Dotson, the first ever man to be exonerated by DNA. And this was a request by Chris. Um, but we're going to wait just a little bit. Um, my little thingy went away. Oh, because I'm on the wrong thing. Okay, I'm, I can see now. So right from the get, I have two thumbs down. Woohoo! Give me all. Doesn't matter. Hey, Wong. Good to see most of you again. You missed a good show on cats tonight, Chris, in my opinion. Um... So how was everybody's, well, I, let's see, did I just, no, that was Sunday. Yeah, I skipped last night.
Christine, I saw you say you may lose internet. I hope not. Yeah, you can. So, okay. Well, hello, Lake. Um, let's see, I have to get to something. Real quick. I'm not going to read the entire article. Um, oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, great. I suppose I... Well, how does that happen? Well, I guess I'm going to have to do it this way through my email. So let's see. Welcome, David. So, um, hey, Kath, how are you? Okay. And Mindy, hey. So we're going to talk about the Gary Dotson case first. Um, it's going to be pretty short. Um, I mean, I, in my opinion, I think. I mean, we'll see. Um, but I'm going to share this article. Um, so let me do that. Let me make sure you all can see it. can't zoom on it either, but so could you guys see that? I mean, you guys probably can't see the, I know when I watch other chats. Okay, thanks. Yes, that is very sad. Uh, David, I saw uh, Gray Hughes was doing a live on that. That is very sad. I Gray thought she might have left intentionally. I was agreeing with him. Um, I guess I would. I wish that was what happened. Um, sadly, um, I, I'm I, I haven't watched Gray's live yet. I just saw the title of it. I'm going to watch it later to to see, you know, exactly what happened. But it is very, very sad. We need to pray for the family. Okay, guys, so let's go back over here. 31 years ago today, Gary Dotson became the, became the first person to be exonerated by DNA testing. 19, in 1977, 16-year-old Kathleen Kroll reported that she was raped in a Chicago suburb. The rape, in fact, had not occurred. Pearl made it up, even providing police with a description of the purported perpetrator to explain why she needed contra contraception after having a consensual encounter with her boyfriend and fearing she might become pregnant. Police showed her a book of mugshots and, according to Kroll, pressured her to identify a photo of Gary, who was just 24 years old, and by chance, 
almost perfectly matched her description of the imaginary perpetrator. Dotson was convicted based on the identification and flawed forensic science presented at trial and sentenced to 25 to 50 years in prison. And this is sad, guys, because this happens still today. Later, Kathleen was guilt-ridden about having sent an innocent man to prison. In, in 85, more than five years into Gary's prison sentence, she admitted that she had fabricated the rape, fabricated the rape but the prosecutors discounted Kathleen and took the position that she was lying about her recantation. Several years later, Gary's news lawyer gained access to a new technology he had heard was being used in England, DNA testing. The results matched Kathleen's then boyfriend, corroborating her recantation. The DNA results led Gary's conviction to be overturned. He was exonerated after spending 10 years in prison. So, actually, that didn't tell the whole story. I want to make sure I haven't missed anybody coming in. Um, that's not the whole story. Um, yes, it was found in a shipping container. It must have been a huge shipping container. Um, yeah, we'll talk a little about that, David. Thank you. And again, welcome. Um, so, actually, she was living with foster parents. She had sex with her boyfriend. She was afraid that she might be pregnant or get pregnant. And so she went home and said she had been raped. Then she became a Christian and she did feel guilt ridden and felt she couldn't live with herself because she put an innocent man in prison. So um, when this came out, of course the public was in outrage. They wanted Gary freed. His family wanted him freed. They forgave her, he forgave her but the prosecutors weren't satisfied because, I mean, they thought, you know, that it was all because of her religion. And then some things in her story did change. Her foster parents said that, well, her foster mother said that when she came home that night, basically it, couldn't have been an act the way she was acting. She was very upset, crying, shaking. Um, she also had um, her hand, um, a mark on it, like a ball-shaped mark. And then there was something engraved in her stomach, written on her stomach by like glass. And... <clears throat> And she was very detailed about the story of the rape. So it, it did leave a lot of unanswered questions to the prosecutor. Um, and when the officer found her wandering that night, she was upset and crying and stuff. So they weren't giving in. So actually before the DNA testing, his last chance for freedom was clemency. And the governor didn't even really believe her. And so he did something to make both sides happy. He said he stood with the conviction, but he went with time served. So Gary became a free man, but he still wanted his, wanted his name cleared. So he met this other lawyer. My dogs are dreaming. <laughs> Two of them at the same time. Anyways, um, they, Oliver, please, Oliver, don't start. So his lawyer told him about the DNA. And it's okay, guys. 
okay. I'm sorry, you guys. So they went for this DNA testing and it completely exonerated him. There was no doubt that it was not Gary's and it did lead back to her boyfriend. But they don't know. There's still questions about how she was acting that night, the marks on her stomach and everything. So maybe her boyfriend got rough with her. Maybe he did something to her. We don't know because there's still that. But the matter is Gary Dotson was exonerated. So I'm missing people coming in. Because I see... No, I said hi to IVI, Chris. Or what do you mean you forgot IVI? Hi, Rosie. Hi, Ohio gal. Missed you for, you haven't seen you for a while. Chris, what did you mean you forgot IVI? I said hi to IVI before you came in. So, did I get everybody then? So, that is, that's the story on Gary Dotson. Um, the sad part is, is this, because of him, I mean, the good part is, because of him, he was the first man to be ever exonerated because of DNA. So, then, that's where the trail starts, you know, that has since then freed others. But the sad part is, is that this still happens today. People get wrongfully convicted and sometimes they spend years and years in prison before, you know, they get out. Hey, Tan, you're back. Hi, sweetheart. Not staying, just passing by. Got toothache. Oh, man, still got appointment with oral surgeon on the 24th. That's still four days away. Man. They'll probably pull it for you, Tan. But you make sure they give you antibiotics, too. Because if you've still got pain, that they, they must not have given you a strong enough antibiotic. Yeah, great job. Thanks, peeps. I'm over here on YouTube again. Yes, I know. She's miserable. Man, and she's been going through that for a while now, man. I hope not, Christine. You guys stay safe there. Yep, we'll keep praying for you, Chris. And um, keep praying for Sarge. In uh, crime, her situation with the school. Oh, I bet you are, Ken. I bet you are. You know, they found... Uh, Twin Lakes already shut down for 14 days because of COVID. <sighs> so. Okay, so anybody have anything to say? Chris, you want to 
add anything to the Gary Dotson case since this was your request? I mean, I... Test results on Friday. Okay. And, okay. I'll bring that up again tomorrow at Wednesday night Bible study. Again, welcome, David. Okay. Um. Okay, Chris, um, I'm going to, oh, let's see, uh, Christine's going to come on, I'm not sure yet, we haven't decided, Thursday or Friday, we're going to talk about the Manson case, everybody's wanting that, um, and I'm still going to do the smiley face, I'm just not sure when, and then, um, I want to do a couple of, of um, I can't think of her name, Kathleen, is it Zollner? Her innocent that she's got now. Lavender with cloves and coconut oil. Mash it into, I'm going to put it up here. She might be gone. Well, hello, Dana. How are you? Okay, well, I guess I'm going to bring crime on. We're going to talk about social media and Delphi. And by the way, I don't know if Kat's watching tonight or not. I, I, I didn't want to go live until he ended. I had this scheduled for 8.30 um, because he's usually done around 8. Um he had an awesome chat tonight, man. It, it was really good. And, and um, Incog's chat was good Friday. Um, I mean, they were both really good. So I have to admit, you know. Um, really good points, you know. Uh, like Incog said, either way, we'll be finding out. And, but like Kat said, with this COVID stuff, who knows if it might get pushed back. But one thing I will say is he is very, very intelligent. And I just wish you all could see his work in this case. But anyways, um, I, so I did, I came on late because I was waiting for him to end. But then I thought, well, a lot of his people don't follow my channel so I didn't think it would hurt if I came on so I, I did wait till like 8 45 or so so hope he's not upset with me but um okay I'm gonna bring crime on oh wait did I miss something so sorry at Dana what's the matter oh you have a toothache too Dana that's you and 10 both I'm sorry, Dana. Okay. Crime is here. Everybody, welcome crime. Are you there, crime? I'm here. Hello. Oop. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you. Can everybody else hear crime? Hold on, I gotta mute somewhere. Good 
they okay can, can you hear me yep okay and they, and they can too okay good hello everybody um hi ann how are you doing i'm doing just fine so i have a before we start the rumor talk it's so weird that i did this whole rumor thing last night and how things can get so blown up um, I did, I started it last night on mine and then, um, it's just crazy. It's crazy. You guys, it, it, all I have to say to your people and some of my friends in here, thank you for supporting me when you do. Um, I'm, I'm grounded to my house. Thanks to, um, Hmm. I'll put this the nicest way. I'm normally a very nice person, but I got really thrown under the bus at work. So um, I am um, grounded three to five days, had to go get the regular test because I don't know if anybody knows that the C test, the fast one, the quick one is no longer for free. As of today, CDC released it to everybody out there in the community that is doing it. Um, you can get the three to five day one for free if you're exposed, but not the rapid one without having to pay $130. Wow. Yeah. I didn't have direct contact with this person and it just totally blew up at work. I, I kind of lost it um, today uh, in texting. I was happily, I was just fine. I didn't give in to the, I knew that people were talking, but I had staff that refused to come into my room and work with my kids if I did not get tested. When I didn't even have direct contact with this person. So, been a rough afternoon, but I'm better now because I'm here with you. But rumor started everything today and then it just got so blown up. So I'm glad that we're talking about rumors. Yeah, well, and... Okay. It's interesting. I think we're trying to talk at the same time. Um, it's also interesting that um, we were planning this and Kat, it kind of fell into Kat's chat too. I mean, he kind of I, addressed that. Yeah, I was there for a little bit. Um, then I got pulled out for a meeting. So <laughs> not one I wanted to go to. Yeah, but I'm yeah. just not going to let I'm I'm not going to let people step all over me. And I'm sorry, at 23 years old, you haven't had a life yet and you shouldn't tell me how to run mine. Yeah. I got they threw me under the bus. They're like, why are you even working here? You have a high risk situation. Your doctor has told you not to work here. Why are you? I'm like. If you think I'm going to quit what I love to do because of this C thing, you're out of your minds. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. So, ugh. Yeah. It, it, women. <laughs> well, so, I, I only have one thing to say about the COVID is that it is real, but it is another type of the flu strain. Mm -hmm. And it is, can be serious for certain people, but I believe they are, the numbers are not correct. They're definitely not correct. Um, right. And I am with Kat on the, 
I do agree with what he says. I don't, it, it, you know, I, I feel people should wear a mask if they want to wear a mask. But I don't think we should be forced to do anything. And I am being forced to wear a mask because one staff does not want to come in my room. I said, then don't come in my room. If you're not comfortable, don't come in. It's my room. And all the parents were fine with it. Now, all of a sudden, it, it, I think the issue is we're in uncharted territory. I think that's the problem. Um, this is only starting, we're not even a public school. We have less than 10 kids right now in our school. And this is wreaking havoc on us. I can't even imagine the public schools that are opening Monday. It, it, well, some have uh, opened. Yeah. Some have but opened every, here. And, and, and the closed down. Exactly. I don't, and we're shut down now till Monday. But my my thought on that and it is, am I going to have to get tested every time our school is exposed? I can't pay for that. And I can't take three to five days off every time. It, what do you do? It, my hands are tied. I don't know what. I don't know what to do. Although I will tell you, God had a plan for today because I was at the place getting, I had signed in and all of a sudden I heard um, one of my students call my name and I looked back and it took me a minute. And um, so him and his brothers were there to get, had to get the test too. So not only did all the staff, but they put all the kids through the test. And it's the nose one, which, by the way, is very uncomfortable. <laughs> so, but God had a plan because I went with the student that I have from my class. I went into a room with him and then mom took the two younger ones in the other room. So it worked out really good. You know, there's always a plan. Always. I just don't, we don't always know it. You know? Yep. Yeah. That's what I believe. And okay. he was super scared, the little guy. So I I told him, we do this thing called emotional ABCs with him at school. And I said, now you have to get me through it because I think I'm scared now too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how do we want to begin? Do we want, you have some, you have notes. Do you want questions first and then or? How oh, yeah. Um, well, I'll kind of continue a little bit from what I did last night. Um, I, missed it. I missed it and I didn't have a chance to watch it, but you're, that's fine. You're OK. I'm going to make this really easy for you, Miss Angie. Anything <laughs> for you. Um, they so basically what I was talking about is. Um, I started out with the initial radio information. You know how they were talking on the radio and that part got released? Um, I, I was talking about that because here's what happened. I think that they should have, you know, for the police to hold things so tight and not hold that part because that brought up a lot. When you get the... People who take something and run with it. It's a game of telephone. You tell somebody something, then that person tells another person, but misses a part of it. You know, like the owl is green. Then I tell that next person and I could say the owl is brown. And by the time you get to the end, it's the elephant was pink. <laughs> you know, that's how rumors happen. That's how chaos is created. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of was the gist of it. And then I was talking about um, the way rumors start. 
and how a rumor, somebody typing something into Facebook, it can be misconstrued when you're typing it. It can be misconstrued on the meaning that you were trying to put out there. Somebody takes that and turns it into something bigger because who doesn't want to be acknowledged for knowing something about a big crime like this? So that's kind of what our topic was. Um, um, but that's kind of what I was talking about is things get escalated and I'm sorry. I personally feel that no part of a 13 or 14 year old's um, autopsies or how those children were found or their case, we, they don't have to tell us that. That is part of their investigation. And if that needs to, as curious as our minds are, we don't need to know that as the public. But everybody know, seems to know what the crime scene looked like. You know, it, it's just crazy to me, Miss Angela. Well, what, do you, what do you think about that? Okay, what I think about it is, First of all, my mind has never, ever been curious um, about that um, because I just don't want to know. I have never wanted to know. I mean, I and I always say to myself, who wants to know that? Um, but that's me. Um, and secondly, um, most of, I mean, I'm going to say I've, all the rumors I've seen on Facebook and everywhere else of how the bodies were found and such are rumors. Um, I have talked to Becky Patty. I have talked to Anna Williams. I have talked to Carrie Timmons. I have not talked to Mike Patty personally. But I'm sorry, but I'm going to believe them over anybody else. And that's just my opinion on it. So, um, And I, I don't believe, I don't believe, I just don't believe Dave Erskine saw the coroner's report. I don't know why he would have that privilege. Um, he's, he was this, he's Anna's stepbrother, step uncle. Anna told me he didn't. Anna told me those texts were not true. And, and, why he told her he put those out and and then all the other gory things you see on Facebook in my opinion I mean they're just rumors but I, I question why people want to know that why people put it out um, even if it might have gotten leaked out which I doubt that any of the three people I mentioned would even tell. Um, but, and then there's another person, and I'm not going to say a name, but I think most people will know that swears she saw the coroner's report and talked to, you know, Dr. Kaur and so on. And that's total... BS. And I know 100% by fact she didn't. I have tons of proof saved to back up what I'm saying right now. She never saw that coroner's report. So, 
so that's what I think about that. I'm going to unmute you, Crime. I, I muted you just um, while I was talking. You're fine. Oh. You're okay. No problem. Let's see. Uh, Ivy Rose, we're talking about social media and Delphi. And before, uh, let me look through the comments real quick, and then I have something to say before um, somebody tries to slam me. Okay. Which I've already said this and admitted it before, and I've, um, you know, um, me and Becky Patty have come to... Uh, what do you want to say? Made peace over it or whatever. Um, and I even said in Kat's chat, I think um, at one time or another, we have all believed or at least wanted to believe some of these idiotic rumors on Facebook because we so much wanted the truth. And um, there was a time Everybody knows that I kind of thought Mike Patty was involved. Um, I feel very, very guilty for that. And I made a public apology and I made a personal apology to Becky. And um, because she is as strong of a woman as she is and forgiving person that she is, she forgave me. And... Um, like Tara said, you know, I, I even had a conversation with Tara once and she's like, in my message box, she's like, it's okay. It's okay that she says, I understand why people would think it at first. She's like, you know, we, we are the family law enforcement looks, you know, that we're the first that they're going to look at, but for these people to go this far with it. To this day, people are still accusing the family and bashing them and, you know, and, and it's just so, you know, I don't know. And I, I, I know for a fact right now, I, if I was in any of these people's places, I done lost it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be handling it the way they are. And I'm just admitting, you know. And you're right, though. It's not anybody else's. But it's not our right. It's not our right to know anything, really. I mean, but it's especially not our right to know about the crime scene, how they were murdered, um, and. Law enforcement doesn't owe us anything either. But the family most certainly doesn't. Oh, Wombat leaving? Did Wombat leave? They're going to be listening in the background. Um, has to get ready for stuff. Oh, but okay. All right. Thanks, Wombat. Just won't be typing. Oh, okay. Um, I think that Oh, and the Reddit. Reddit's just, you're right, David. Thank you for mentioning that. Reddit is yes. just as bad. I don't go on there either. I mean, I saw a post one day that where, because um, Open Secrets had done um, something on Garrett Kurtz. And I mean, as fast as her video came up, because I am on Reddit, of course, from a long time ago, I'll get notifications. And it popped up, it said, Garrett admitted that they all killed the girls. And nothing like that was mentioned at all on Open Secrets, but boy, they, boom. I mean, that's how fast rumors can and lies can be made up. And people and it, will run with it. Rumors ruin people. Ruins people's lives. And it's, 
you could have it. It's like when you take on your cases and the, these people are innocent. They've spent all this time in prison and nobody took the time to see if what was said, the evidence was that, you know, if the evidence was there. So r rumors can really ruin people. So Ivy, I totally, I totally agree with you, with your comment. And um, you don't believe anyone saw it unless it was immediate family. I don't know if you're talking about the crime scene. I, the immediate family, I don't believe saw that. They wouldn't even let Becky down there. Um, but if you're talking about the coroner's report, um, I agree with you because I don't know that the family saw that, but they would be the only ones entitled to it. And Derek Erskine would not be one of those. Exactly. And then David says, oh, go on Reddit. I think everyone in the world has been mentioned as BG. You're right. You're right. So many lives have been ruined. They're families' lives, their kids. I mean, yeah. Stuff like this goes on and on for years. Something like that can stick with you. If you're getting pinned for, for murders, a double murder at that. And people can go out on their own and take their own vengeance on these people. And it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Garrett Kirk becoming a Delphi suspect online has completely destroyed the research on my screenplay and book. All my contacts have shut down. <laughs> my poor Joy. <laughs> Can you just get a break already, Joy? <laughs> wow. Um, Dana has a good question. Was it Dana, I was going to tell you, I, I like Dana's. Is it ever established if D.E. was with the party that found the girls? He was, Dana, but they held him back. They didn't let him go. Um, so, what, so from what I know or have been told from a very good source, I can't say who, but, I mean, it's a really good source. Um, I don't think he actually went down there and because they held him back, but he was, yes, part of that search. Well, and part of the reason that they didn't want people in that area, once they knew there was something there, they blocked it off because that is a crime scene. And anybody that goes into that crime scene their DNA is going to be there and it can mess up an investigation. So in my opinion, I would assume that they had police with them um, per group. When they do searches like that, they put a head person that is there. That would be the only person that could stand there and, you know, tell everybody else to back, you know, back away. Or, you know, this is a crime scene. We all need to clear it and bring the people in that need to be here. Um, and and if, the, if they did not have, I, I, you know, I do have to remember that it's a small town. So in a small town, what do you have? Like two sheriffs, three? A sheriff, then deputies that are under that sheriff. How many does Delphi have? Does anybody know? We have one. Yeah. One sheriff. And then do you have deputies under him? Yeah, we have deputies. And then okay. Chief, police chief. Because we have a sheriff's department and then we have the police department. So we have a 
police chief as well. I be okay. I was under the impression that those texts were based on what he saw at the scene, not the report. Um, yes, those texts are based on what he says he's seen. But he also says he saw the coroner's report, Ivy Rose also. And both, according to Anna Williams, Abby's mother, are untrue. And I believe her above him. Um, A coroner is not going to put his job on the line by letting anybody see that report. Now, I, I will say that um, the, the coroner more than likely could have told somebody that person may have told somebody. And if they do that, that's on the department to keep it within their boundaries. And I'm sure that once that information was released, that we see from the text messages, there, all you can do is put it on the basis of, was this for real or was it not? Did he see it or didn't he? Was he placing himself as a um, player in this on, I know this and I know that and trying to get the notoriety in the beginning or was he really telling the truth and then was told to back up and lie and say that it did he did it that he saw it but he didn't you see what i mean it goes in circles yeah i don't know i just know when i, when I met with anna, with anna I didn't even ask her about it. She brought it up and she was even then, this was about a year ago, if that long, that she still felt so much anger about it. I mean, she was very angry just speaking about it. She wished him jail. She told him that and she still does for that. And he told her he was sorry. He was just trying to stop all the stuff going around and you know, in essence I'm it like, made really? things worse yeah especially for the families do you really think and i was talking about this a little bit last night and do we all truly think if we lost somebody we loved do we want that information out for the public do we right and it once it hits social media, it is repeated, repeated. I mean, my goodness, the Watts thing went on for a year. If I heard one more time about those two little sweet girls in those oil tanks and how they died and what was in their stomachs. And I mean, a family is hurting as it is. This was a loved one in the, both these young girls had families that cared about them. No one wants to know that their, that their child is hurting or was hurt. And every time a family goes online and sees something, it has to be just takes them right back to that day again. That, that feeling that hurt, that anger, the shock of it all. I mean, the shock for them had to have been horrendous because Delphi is small. I mean, it, it nothing truly big like that had happened there. And so this was new for all of them. But still, who wants to go online and have that information out there? Right. And once you put it out on social media, it follows you. It it follows you to the point of employee employers are now searching P 
people's social media before they're even looking at resumes. They're checking social media to see what are you posting? What are you into? What kind of person you are? And by your post, it shows. Well, the, the pictures. Yeah. And Ellie even said that. Ellie says by doing this, you know, you've ruined their work history. You, you know, you're ruining their lives. You are. And you're hindering the case. And you're hindering the investigation. The big point about this is Ellie has probably gotten, I mean, say in a case like this, you get a thousand leads. I would say 999 are probably fake. That one is the one they need. But because everybody's so focused on the rumors that this person did it, that person did it, this. And, and then you get, what, 600 people calling in on with all these different people and every lead has to be checked out. By the time they get to the lead they need, we're looking at three years now and it's still there, you know, that we know, are we... Is this case, I mean, lately people have calling it a cold case. I don't think it's cold. I think they're building a case, but it takes time to build a case. Um, the other person that's going through this right now is Barry Morphew. It's, you know, they've got to build a case. And none of us know not even 10% of who is guilty or who is not. It is not right to put people's names out there. We don't have a clue because we don't have all the um, evidence in front of us. We are not the pros at this. The police are, and we need to let them do their job without all the rumors surrounding it because they have hours and hours they got to go through all of this stuff well that's like the <laughs> sorry it's like the pastors the, the pastor's missing wife, you know, she wasn't, I mean, immediately. I'm lying. Okay. 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 Stop. 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 Hold on just a second, Ange. Okay. Oh, my neighbor's dogs are barking. Um, so they're barking. <laughs> Oliver will bark it for no reason, though. The little turkey. The other weather's not bad right now. I like storms too, but not the tornado kind, I guess. The last storm was pretty bad. We were without power as well. I've got crime muted, but she can't unmute if I mute her. <laughs> Thank you for muting me. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm like sitting here talking to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, social media has... You know, your topic the other night, I did see that because I did. I think I did pop in and say hi or something. I can't remember, but. Yeah, you did. Has social media hindered the case? Hello, Lady Fierce. And I, I would absolutely say yes. I really think it has. I think it has. I don't know if in the beginning it was everybody's intention. You know, I think that's. In the beginning, you know, all these groups were set up, Justice for Libby and Abby, you know, 
da, 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 da. I mean, I think that's what everybody wanted in the beginning. And I think that people still do a lot of people, but some of these groups, it's clear. That's the intentions were, the intentions were good in the beginning. They really were. People were trying to help to bring awareness to the case. Yeah. But as the years have gone by, in my opinion, it's clear that people are all about drama and chaos and fighting and accusing, you know, and I mean, because it's just turned into, you know, that's why I have left, you know, I left, by the way, um, most of the groups, um, I mean, the admins even let it go on, you know, um, it was terrible. And now YouTube, it's carried over, you know? You're right. Yes. Um, Firefly? Wait, Lady Fierce. Hello, Lady Fierce. Oh, really, Dana? I didn't know that. So she did kill herself. Oh, man, alive. She must have been hurting emotionally. Oh, goodness. Well, that was the preacher's wife, right? Yes, yes. Welcome, yeah. wife. Lady Ferris, in case you didn't hear me the first time. Um, yeah. And she hid it. She hid herself in a container. Like she didn't want to be found. So she had to, it had to been one you could drive into. I yeah, it is. They're huge. They have, um, I don't know if you want to look on the, your website, but they, they show the car being taken away from there. It was on there. It was on the news thing. I saw it. Um, but yeah, it's one of those big containers. Shipping. Hold on a second. No, Joy. Um, her youngest, I want to say, is like five. Four or five. I, I think there's going to be more to this story. We just got to watch for it. So, yeah, they are like semi-trailers, Ohio. Yeah, there was two containers there, but she drove into one, closed herself in, and then shot and, well. Goodness. Um, well, I found, uh, if you guys want to, sometimes these videos don't play, but if you guys want to watch it really quick, I found it from three hours ago. Okay, so her youngest is two. Yeah, that's it. What is, I it is possible that she could have had postpartum depression still. It can go for a while, but I'll have to keep an eye on this story. So sad. It is, that is, oh. Oh man. Now, did they, um, now that we just were talking about this, the Facebook page you saw it on, did you, um, not you, Angie, but um, Dana, did you happen to go look? Because this, they just found her this morning at 11. Are wow. they releasing, did LE release that information? Well, here's an update. You, you guys want to watch the update? I have it. Please. Pulled I'll up. be quiet now. 
um, if it'll play. Okay, hold on a minute. Knock, knock. Who's there? I'm Colagar. Gotta watch the advertising. An easy and affordable way to screen. Delivered to your doorstep. And most insured patients pay zero dollars. Ask your health care provider if Colagard is right for you. Tonight, the vehicle belonging to missing mom, Mary Lane Carter, has been found along with a woman's remains. Good evening, I'm Joe Birch. And I'm Joyce Peterson. Conja Anthony is on assignment tonight. The discovery was made in Crittenden County earlier today, and that is where we find WMC Action News 5's Kelly Cook live with the very latest. Kelly. Well, the Crittenden County Sheriff's Office just wrapped up a press off conference just a few minutes ago, confirming to us again that they have located the vehicle of a missing Kansas City, Kansas mom, excuse me, who's been missing now for several days. In that vehicle, they did find the body of a female inside. Sheriff Mike Island says a family member searching the area for Mary Lane Carter discovered the vehicle around 11 this morning. It was parked inside an empty shipping container on private property. Carter's purse and credit cards were found inside. And while Allen confirms it is Carter's vehicle, he could not confirm the identity of the body inside. Carter has been missing since earlier this month. Her family reported her missing while she was traveling in Alabama, where her parents live. Credit card statements show she bought gas in West Memphis. The last time anyone saw her, authorities say the death of a person in the vehicle does not appear to be suspicious. They're not suspecting foul play here. The body is in the uh, control of the coroner. Hopefully very quickly we can get an identity um, about who was found inside that vehicle. In West Memphis tonight, Kelly Cook, WMC Action News 5. Hmm. Well. Okay, let's see. So the fact is, the facts of this is, so far, a woman in the car, not that it was a self-inflicted. Well, it was by a family member, she said, that posted Oh, that. okay, okay. And then Gray Hughes' video said, um, his title was that it was her, I thought. Okay. I mean, we can assume that well, that's who's in that car. I, I mean, more than likely. Unless, right. Unless, right. I mean, it would be a. Right. I just wasn't sure about the manner of death or if it was foul play or, you know, but. They said no foul play, so it wouldn't. Horribly be sad. It is. The poor kids and the husband. Oh. Very sad. Yeah. I mean... Very true, Ivy Rose. Very true. So when I, um, when my son was a year old with all his medical issues, I was so exhausted and um, I had actually attempted suicide at that point. So I understand the, you're just, your brain's just not in the right place. It just isn't. And at that time, I think people just want the pain to go away. That's what it was for me. I just wanted it all to stop. I was exhausted. We were at doctor's offices three times a week. It, you know, suicide is, um, people can't understand why people do it, but I can. I've been there twice, not once in my life, but I tried twice. So, 
So um, no. and mine was linked back to postpartum, the, the biggest part of it. But I also lost half my blood supply with my son. So I was very sick myself. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed because, um, I mean, it's, it happens. It happens it to a lot of people and mothers. And sometimes they don't even know that's what is going on. No, and nobody knows. And I'm not putting you in this class, but she obviously, I mean, first they said sl sleeplessness. Then they said mental illness played a part. You know, a lot of people don't understand mental illness either. Right. Um, and don't ever be ashamed. Don't ever be ashamed. Yeah, it's, it definitely, um, at the time, I wasn't in a normal state of mind. When you are lack of sleep, it can really mess with you. And I think that's why a lot of moms suffer from some sort of depression because that lack of sleep, your body cannot function on a normal level. And so it, I almost called it a computer safe mode in my brain. Um, I have I, to disagree with you, Chris. I don't, what I don't it, think it was murder. I mean, I, it's possible, I guess, but I mean, I guess it, because nothing's impossible, but considering the circumstances of everything, I think it was probably what they say it was. And the family probably knows law enforcement, you know. Ivy Rose says, I don't stereotype, but I have a feeling it's harder to deal with mental illness as a pastor's wife. And, you know, Ivy Rose, it may be because a lot of times, you know, I can just speak from what I know. Um, a lot of people don't give my pastors. Well, I mean, I don't I don't know. I'm not going to say that they don't, but I, I just think um, we should recognize her more because mm -hmm. a pastor's wife is the backbone of the pastor um, right you know they I, I i understand what you're saying ivy rose well welcome back ivy uh, i think even more so now we need better mental health um treatment for people and better care and i think um that people i think it's become all about insurance companies and the money the you know who's gonna pay for it blah 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 you know what who cares who has to pay for it this it can change your life to get that help and to be able to move forward one foot at a time, knowing that you have a person that keeps you accountable, which is a doctor or a nurse practitioner that can keep an eye on you. Ivy Road. And a lot, a lot of people have that you know i'm just gonna take a shot in the dark here because i'm not an expert and i'm haven't even done research but i would say 90 percent, 80 percent at least of the world 
suffers from depression. And they and a lot of people don't even know it. Um, tons of people suffer from SADS, which is, you know, seasonal affective disorder, dysfunction, whatever it's called, you know, in the wintertime. Um, but don't be ashamed, you know. Right. I have depression. I have, you know, and there's, I'm not ashamed at all. I am, I'm lucky to have a good therapist and psychiatrist. And I, I feel bad for people who don't. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so many people do suffer from that. And they either don't know it or they won't admit it. And they won't, you know. The one thing I, as I've watched, um, the mental health is now coming to the forefront. Um, people just spent three months in their homes. <laughs> and it's really the mental health right now is so high with people having issues. Um, you know, some people have trouble just getting out of bed because it's just too hard. They don't want to face the world. Oh, yes. This, this It's had a huge impact on, I mean, yeah. So Dana says the family member said no foul play. The gun was found in the car. It is very sad. Extreme. For sure. It's people should not have to feel like they're against four walls and they're closing in. Not in this day and age. I feel like mental health is still stigmatized and a lot of religious people still believe that God can pull you out. So when that's not enough, people may feel like they're not good enough Christians. Well, I'll just give you my opinion on that um, because I know a lot of pastors, not mine, but in the past, I've had pastors, very legalistic pastors, by the way, um, say that uh, you don't need medicine for depression or whatever's mentally, you know, um, that God can take care of that and stuff. And don't get me wrong, I believe God can, because I believe God can, he's, you know, same yesterday as he is today and tomorrow. But why is it, I would always say to them, that you go to the hospital when you're physically sick, you go to the hospital and get medicine for, you know, your heart or, you know, your stomach issues or this or that, why is it so wrong or bad or unbelievable that you don't need medicine for your mind. So that's my opinion. And I don't feel not good enough. And I don't feel that, you know, just because I'm depressed that my God is not you know what I mean? I mean, God gave us a brain, too. And you can have right. I mean, I, I, I just don't believe the way those pastors, you know. But, yeah, I know there are pastors like that. Um, and there's some <laughs> believers or some beliefs or faiths that, the belief, that believe no medicine for anything. But... Dana says, thank you, Joy, but I wish I could have admitted it when it was going on. It took almost overdose to get. Well, and I can tell you guys a little bit about, um, on your channel, Angie, I can say this. On mine, I can't, because I don't know who watches my channel, um, family-wise. And so I try to be really, really careful. Um, but. I grew up with a mom who was um, 
oh gosh, I don't even know the right word for it. Um, manic depressive and very abusive. And when I say abusive, I mean beyond the normal. Um, my mom was on the run for four years with us because people kept calling. Babysitters would call um, because we had bruises. We had, I mean, there was definitely. But my mom is a manic bipolar. And they're either really up or really down. Um, so I think that from growing up in that, I knew that I could choose to go one way. But then also once I started having my own children, a lot of my childhood creeped up on me. And the when, I mean, I will tell you this story about me, but when I had my second son, I lost half my blood supply. I had a uterine rupture with him. And I really thought I was going to die that night. I truly thought I was going to die. I... They couldn't eat. I was in ICU. The baby was in ICU. And do you know the one person I asked for was the same person that abused me as a child? So even though the abuse happened, when you feel at your lowest, you are going to want that parent. So that's why people go back to those parents. It, it, there's, you know, you want that parent to be there for you, but mentally they can't be. But I will tell you that night, um, besides my husband, my mom sat in a chair right next to my bed the whole night in ICU. And if I even flinched, she jumped up and came over and would talk to me and calm me down and she would sit back down once I was calm. So I think that it is understandable when some of these children are abused and have mental health issues, it's normal to want your parent to be the parent. So it's, it's, it's definitely tough. Yeah. It's, I'm sorry. It, that's okay. I was just reading the chat. I am too. <laughs> and yes, Chris or David, it's okay to disagree in here. Um, we, in all opinions, you won't get, you know, like everybody's opinion is um, okay I, here. We don't bash people for their opinions. And um, yes, it's just fine to disagree. And Yes. Yeah, so and David, I think it was me that had him sign off. I'll talk to him later about it. But um, and I'll talk to Ange later about it. But I think it was me that chased him off. So I'll we'll talk to him later about it. No worries on your end. But yeah, I do or think he might I be going to watch. He might be going to check research or something or oh yeah he's a busy guy <laughs> he loves sending us stories i mean like i said anything is possible i mean maybe that's why they're not releasing more on the news because but like i'm sure if the families posted that then they're posting what law enforcement has told them exactly and exactly but if it is somebody posing as the family how do we know there you go, right back to the rumor mill. But I mean, it sounds like it came from a good source. So when it comes from the family, I always will believe family over anybody else in a case. I don't care if they're top notch people. 
you always believe the families, um, not, there are families that we can't believe, obviously, and we can usually pick them up. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, David, I mean, y'all can disagree with what I think too. I mean, that's, and we all get along in here. Yeah. I disagree with you, Angie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, though, Angie and I do have, we all have different. We all, we all think different. If God made us all the same, we probably wouldn't like each other. Yep. My husband will tell you one is more than enough of me. It makes things interesting. The I. Only, only thing is, you know, we just. The only thing I hope you will notice here. Um, that is a rumor is that we don't like drama here and we don't like chaos. So, and I hope, and you it's will. not going to happen on my channel either. And I hope you will enjoy that. Yes. And we want to, I know that for me, and I know Angie's this way too, we're here to try to help bring awareness to some of these cases. We are not pros, <laughs> no, none of us ever claim to be, <laughs> but you know, we just want to share stories. We want, you know, you as our subscribers and, you know, in some ways becoming friends through the internet. Um, but we truly want people people's opinions. If we all can't have our own opinions, then it's just, what kind of world would that be? Which kind of brings me, you know, I know this, is, I know we're supposed to be talking about Delphi, but you know how, this is another thing, David, that happens on my channel. We have our talks yeah. and we usually lead into chit chat, which my community really likes, but you know, I came across this um, last night when I got home from Bible study. I was uh, just, you know, like I told you guys, I get these recommended YouTubes or when you first get on Facebook, you know, or not Facebook, you, well, you know, it's becoming Facebook. It really is. But YouTube and It's really awful what I've been seeing because I have been trying. Do you have um, getting feedback? It shouldn't be on my end. I'm I'm muted. Hold on. No, you're not muted. Oh yeah, now you are. But it sounded like um, traffic. But anyways, um, I saw some really horrible, ugly things. I mean, people really, I mean, and when I say taking stabs at other YouTubers, I mean, horrible, horrible stabs. And it's like, this is all they do. This is all they do every time they're on YouTube. I mean, they are total drama channels. I mean, not, I mean, I could think of another name for their channels, but they are just horrifically cyberbullying people. And you know, there's actually people that commit suicide over this stuff. As a matter of fact, my pastor did a funeral about a month ago over a, for a girl that committed suicide.
and over stuff like this and then people telling her kill yourself kill yourself and as I was watching this stuff last night I was like I, I couldn't believe some of it and it really made me sad it made me sad for these people that they're doing it to, even though some of these people may have their issues, but what right does it give these people to be treating them so, oh, it was just horrible. And yes, some of these people have mental illness. Oh, I'm not even going to name it, Ivy Rose. I'm not going to name the videos or the places or the, but I mean, it was terrible. Um, but I was just, I shouldn't have been surprised, right? I mean, it happens in schools, it happens at work, it happens, why not on the internet, right? Right, Ivy. So I want to say to every one of you here, though, that have told your story tonight, do not be ashamed. And you've been very strong for telling your story. And thank you very much that you have felt comfortable enough to do that. But don't ever be ashamed. Bullying is very real, Rosie. Yes, it is. It is. And these are adults, guys, though. He, you know, kids bully. Yeah, it's very real. But these are grown adults. Grown adults. And, and this is what they thrive on. And they set out to do every day. I just want to add to what you just said um, and something else for people that are in that situation. I will tell you, um, my husband and I have a code word. If I call him with that code word, I have three people that will be to my house in 10 minutes. And I only do it if I'm really struggling. And... Um, he knows not to ask questions, but okay, I got somebody come and stay on the phone with me. Um, he's gotten really good about it. Now, it is hard for him too. On the other hand, when I do struggle, but something that I want to add here is it is because my mother had it genetically, I was predispositioned. And not only do I struggle with it, but I have two boys that struggle with it too. And so my husband's had to understand mental health a little bit better. He had no clue when we, you know, it, it just wasn't um, something he agreed, you know, agreed to when we got married. We obviously didn't really understand it until about 10 years after we were married. And then it really showed its face. And um, especially when I got the diagnosis of MS in 2013, um, I am now watching my sister deteriorate. And um, I think that it's really hard on some levels to watch. And so we all have fam family members that 
struggle with different things. And it's hard to watch that. And it's hard, especially genetic wise, if we're predispositioned for things, there's going to be that anxiety in the back of our minds. So it's important to have that one person you trust and set up a system. And my kids, we set up a system for them too. If you know that you that your children are struggling, talk to them about it. There is nothing wrong with having mental health issues. There is no more stigma anymore. It is normal for people to get depressed. It's a normal process of life. The problem is once you get there, it's very hard for people outside to understand it. And so we all have to have a plan. Talk to your teenage kids. Set up a plan. If you um, you may not feel like this now, you know, do it when they're feeling, you know, when it's an uptime. I've talked to my mom about this. We have a caseworker with my mom. Um, she is now in a assisted living, high functioning one, but I know she's being watched twenty four hours, and and for me that has taken a lot of the pressure off. Um, but set up a system, get a friend that you trust and set up a system so that you can make that one call and you have to make that agreement with yourself that you, before you think of doing anything or taking your life, reach out, make that call first because there is people there and you're not in your right mind. That's the only way I can describe it. You're not thinking about the people that you're gonna leave behind. You're not thinking about how important you are to some of the people in your life and how this will affect them. You can't process, you're so exhausted, you just can't process in your mind. So set up a system. It's, it's a really good thing. The suicide, if you don't want to call that first, get a good friend that you trust 100% that will make all those calls for you and get you the help you need. I understand. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> keep trying to talk at the same time. I understand that, Dana. Um, mental health runs in my family. Um, clear back to my grandma, um, my aunt, one of my aunts. Really bad with my aunt, and so. Uh, that's good that you do that but I, I i i hope that it doesn't for him but at least you know you're planning ahead and you're talking with him educating him well and i know that i've told you angie but um my 19 year old well 20 year old now um december 4th won't forget the day woke me up, came into my room, woke me up in the middle of the night. Mom, I did something and I need you to know. He swallowed 70 pills in December. I almost lost my son. And it's hard. It's hard. It's, it's scary to leave him. Um, it's very, it's a scary situation to be in. No, oh, I couldn't imagine. Gosh, Nick, I'm sorry about that. That's hard. 
That's yeah. really hard. Um, anyways, let's um, go back to um, Nico. Uh, you were with him, Nico. I'm so, so, so sorry, buddy. Gosh, I can't even imagine. No, I can't. I can't. And uh, yeah, let's put this up there because this is right. I mean, you know, we're talking about just women, but, you know. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, David. Men as well. We tend to put on a brave face on things. And for whatever reason, cases involving females get highlighted more. It's not wrong for a man. Amen. Thank you very much, David. And, 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 you know, mental health, abuse, you know, it's so very true. Thank you, David. Very, very true. Very true. Nick, and I'm so sorry for you, buddy. So what were you going to say, Crime? Oh, I was saying that, um, oh, geez, Nick. Nick just posted, no, I was at the beach. He called me the night before and wanted to hang out. Wow. Horribly sad. No, Nico, yeah. I mean, I hope you're not blaming yourself. It is not your fault, buddy. Sure, Ivy Rose. Yeah, this girl's missing from Greensburg, Indiana. And, you know, of course, me and actually my husband, we saw on the news last night, and I was just thinking it. He said it. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. I'm just praying that that's not the case. Yeah, that's coming from you, crime. I don't know what it is. It sounds like traffic or something. So I'm not sure. I'm going to try to re-click on the link. Let me log, log out and log back in. I just refreshed my screen, hoping that would help. But I realize I'm like 30 seconds, like, when I talk, you're not talking, but it says I'm talking over you, and I don't know how that's happening. So maybe my feed is behind yours. So let me um, re-click on the link. I'll come right back, okay? Okay. Oh, she was located. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Thank God. Woo. I was so worried. I was so worried. I was so worried because, you know, that's right there by Ohio and, um, mm. okay. Oh, thank you, Ivy Rose. We get those floods all the time here, Christine. Yes, Dana, that's true, too. Uh, 
Oh, wow. Nico, we love you too. Truly, truly, truly. Wow, the trap chat dropped. You know, it always rises when we talk about Delphi. And it drops when we don't. <laughs> That's okay. Crimes back. Located Tuesday. She's been located. 745. No other info. Well, as long as she was located, well, but it doesn't say safe. Does it say safe, Ivy Rose? Found safe? Ivy, he's um, Abby's step uncle. He's since moved away. Are you still getting feedback or is that better? Um, not right this minute, no. So she's been found. It doesn't say anything else, but um, we hope she's been found safe. So, okay, crime, you wanted to say something. Um, the, so I was going to ask, um, what for Delphi, um, what have you seen? <laughs> I, I'd probably be shorter list on what you haven't seen, but what have you seen? that may have altered Delphi due to a rumor? Oh, man. Where do you start? Um, I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I can't mention them here. Okay. Um, because I just don't want the families to hear them. But I mean, my biggest thing is these, um, there's this one group, like secret group <clears throat> and, uh, some of the awful, awful theories they came up with regarding the families, like of why they would do it and how and you know and i mean very very sick and horrific i mean you know i mean these are the links that some of these people are going to and um you know some of these people come right on the family's pages and say awful horrible things outright to them um, I mean, that's just one, but I mean, mostly altered or hindered the case, I would say side by sides. Um, and any, every time somebody's arrested, every single time somebody's arrested, whether it be local or out of state, but anytime somebody's arrested for a sex crime or they're on that vein, like automatically they're considered a, you know, Delphi murder. Um, yeah, the latest one is Barry Morphew. I mean, everybody is, a, everybody's been a POI for yeah. Facebook, not LE, but Facebook. True, Ivy. I, true. I, I will have to say that they're in Indiana. You guys all look alike. 
okay? <laughs> I yeah. never thought that before until I started seeing all these different, like, suspects. And they're in Indiana. It's like, everybody looks alike. That does not make that person, they may be a druggie, but it doesn't make them a killer. You know what I mean? Um, not all the time. I know that there are cases that, yes, that is the issue. But not every person that is arrested is the Delphi killer. It, it's just. And the thing is, though, if I don't see somebody that's high being able to get away with this, I just don't. Um, I think they would have, you know, and also most of the people that they've matched up to this, the picture is, I don't think looks anything. I, I in my opinion, I, I've not seen any of them look like, um, now I do know personally, I do know the person who made that first sketch but i you know and a lot of people say well you can't see the person on the bridge or you can't make out who no maybe not make out who but you can tell that is an older person in my opinion that's my personal opinion there's no way that person is 18 or in their 20s. That's my opinion. Um, Everybody walks different. Everybody has a different way of moving. And I think that's why LE at that second press conference wanted people to look at the demeanor of the person. Watch how they're walking. Where are they walking? And... Um, I think that that's what they want us to look at. But Carter has said so many times, chop that head off. Don't look at the face. Look at the body. Look at the gate. Look at it. So why come out with another sketch anyway? In my opinion, that can only mean one thing. And again, this is my opinion. There was somebody else involved. But that's just my opinion. That's just my own opinion. Um, now, uh, yes, you're right. Gray does. He stays on top of all the cases. Yep, you're right. Blake says, I've rarely seen a sketch in any case that actually resembles the suspect. True. Now, I did hear Billy Jensen and Paul Holes, um, and they were talking about this one case where they thought it may have been Karina in the video. And they said how, and I don't know if they were referencing the Delphi case or not. I think they were referencing a few. But they were saying how, isn't it funny how, and maybe not in these words either, but how, clear this video is how clear you know because they got such a good video and a good you know because i mean and they did that girl looks just like karina um i mean they got the picture they were able to see the tattoos and everything but then how others they have and it's just horrible and you can't you know and I mean, I really did feel like they were referencing Delphi, but I know it's been explained. I know it has, but I'm just saying, um, it is, it is funny how some videos you, you get and pictures you get are so clear and then others are so terrible. Right. And you know, Angie, I was wondering, um, and and what 
the group may think about this. Is it possible they blurred the face on purpose? It is possible. I mean, anything is possible. Because they needed to build a case and they didn't want people to know because they didn't want to scare that person off. The best pictures I think there are, and they are different than the ones that first came out, I think, are the pictures I put up tonight. The one, two, three of the bridge guy from the Indiana State Police. I think those are very clear. I think you can see. I mean, I can see. I don't. And people's argued with me. They're like, no, that's something under. His, no, I see a goatee. It's not a beard. It's a goatee. I see the color of it. They have hair. They're not bald. So I just want to stress, it's not Tobe. Tobe's always bald. He always has the long mustache and he never has a beard. Except, oh, when they did the beard thing for the canines. I just wanted to say that. But Ivy Rose says, Ange, how do you think it went down if someone else was involved? Well, if, just if, okay. I, my theory, and you know, like, uh, what, who says the shadow box that it changes all the time? Oliver it was one shoe joy that was found not both um but I you know my theory was Ivy that the bridge guy is not the actual killer he was just the lure and the killer was waiting down below and maybe more I go back and forth on that but I'm going to tell you, and I don't care who wants to say I'm crazy because, I mean, I just don't care. Y'all know me. I don't care what people think. Thomas Bruce is becoming interesting to me. I just want to know. I want more connection to Delphi. Because Kat does have a, a lot of factual information. The biggest one is that they can't talk to him until they're done with him down there. And I did get that. Oh, I don't know. It's in the rumors chat when this guy was going crazy on Ron Logan and swore he was working with the state police and all that and photographs and blah, blah. So I called him up. And so then I asked him some more questions about, you know, because I wanted to know why, you know, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? And then they explained the clearing process. And, and then he's like, and people are upset with us because we're not going down there to Missouri and well, we can't. And so he's right on that. Because it's crossing the state border, yes. But if he were in Indiana. They could definitely go talk to him. And they could charge him if he was the one. Now, Angie, this is probably a really good question to ask you. Um, I know that when I lived in Illinois, it got dark during the winter time around five-ish, right? What time does it get dark there? Because it it's not like that piece of land where the girls were found is an open area, 
where they could be seen or that the items that were found would have been found at night because it was so dark there. But what time does it get dark there? Well, it starts getting dark about probably a, it starts getting dark. It depends if it's a sunny day or not, but, and it was that day. Um, probably around 530, 545, 6. I mean, it varies, mm -hmm. but I can't speak on what I know about the tie dyed shirt. Okay. That's a conversation I had with family and I can't talk on it. Um, as okay. far as the shoe, I don't know about that. It's a good question. Um, but I do know this. They, I do know they weren't looking for dead bodies. They were looking for live bodies. But I was, I was just going to say that they're thinking the girls got lost in the woods. I'm not sure they were looking on the ground. They may have been looking out. You know what I mean? And that could be how it was missed that first day. But I do know that Grandpa Erskine did drive and search right by there with his ATV high beams on. So, okay. I do know that. 605. Thank you, Ivy. I was going to look it up, but I'm afraid to touch my computer because I got rid of the noise. <laughs> um, and um, so let's see, Ivy says, do you have an opinion on why BG would be the lure and not the other person? I don't, Ivy, I, I just, it's something that I've not been able to shake. It's just, I'm, that's just always what I thought. And then there's other, I mean, I, I don't know. I just. Ivy Rose. It's just, stuck, um, it's just stuck with me. I don't know. Two people were in kayaks that night. Yeah, there was. Yep. Just, I think they said there was two people in kayaks going down to see if maybe they had fallen or some, you know. Right. I, and. I'll tell you, Pat is phenomenal. The guy is brilliant. I mean, I'm, I'm with Angie on that. He really, he doesn't just say something. He's got the backup to go with it. Um, and if more people on YouTube did that, we would have a lot less speculation. He really does present a great case on TV. He does. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think that he's just really smart. He backs it up. He's got the info and, um, he's really bless his heart. Um, I still think we need to get him a puppy. When he's ready, he absolutely is extremely smart. And, um, I'm, I mean, after incognito's live friday and then tonight it i mean i'm just saying it's seeming very possible is all i'm saying i'm just going there i mean i'm not saying i'm i don't have a poi and i haven't for a while but Dana, yes, he did. He lost Wolfie a couple of weeks ago. And you can just see he's heartbroken over it. 
I just want to reach to the screen and hug them. Dana, you know, I think I, I, I thought about that and I, I said to myself, and I'm not trying to bash LE, but uh, I, you know, I thought, cause, cause they did do a presser that year, didn't they? So I don't know why they would have done that because that, that was a like, I don't know. I, I started to say, because I'd been thinking about that and I thought, well, because they know the community, everybody wants to hear something from them. So they're just, um, you know, and they're just, they, you know, maybe they were looking for a confession. I mean, they, right. Now I have a question on Dana. Dana. That's a good question. I guess you're right about that. That is a good question. Are we a hundred percent sure that it is finger DNA? Partial print? Because you know there's different forms of DNA. Well, I, know. I don't, we know I don't want to go too deep into the DNA, but... Um, Tobe said something about fingerprints. He did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was my question. Was that a fact that it was partial print? or partial DNA or however. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Um, Well, a lot doesn't make sense about this case. That's the thing. No. Sunset that day, 6.05. Partial print. Okay. And DNA. Okay. Thanks, Dana. I was wondering about that. But, Sharon, <laughs> is that coming from... Officials or rumors? I know it said it in the text, but did that ever come from officials? Was that in the podcasts or law enforcement? Or are we going from the text? And we know the officials are not talking about the crime scene. I, I think they did somewhat, Ivy. I'm not sure. I mean, um, I, I don't know. I can't comment, really. She Now, um, Ivy brought up a good point. If they were in their kayaks, there is that hill there. They would not have seen up over that hill. So it is very possible because didn't they say the water was low at that time, too? If the water was higher, they may have. But if the water was lower, then they're below that. And there's a, um, what do they call those? Not a cliff, but a dirt that they would have, a hill that they'd have to look over. I, Dana, and you know that I used to think that. I really did. And the main reason was because of Grandpa Erskine going through by there. He went by there several times with his high beams on and didn't see. And that I did used to think that. Everybody forgive me. But I don't think that anymore. No, David, I, I mean, I, I think, I mean, they may have been set up to go out there, but I, I will always believe they were targeted. 
I will always believe that until, um, long, you know, until it's proven otherwise. And I believe that's why Tobe said the community is safe because I think they knew that. I think they knew why. And I think they knew the people, whoever did this was, and I think that's, I think that's why he said that. But that's just my opinion, David. People wouldn't be able to see. Oh, okay. That's what crime just went over. Yeah. And actually, um, on the part where the bodies were moved, CSI would know, the crime scene investigators, they would know by the ground. And um, it. there are different aspects to a crime scene. So they would have analyzed that and said, okay, were these just dropped off here or were they murders take, had the murders taken place there? Um, they would in their um, investigation, they would have seen that. And having the FBI on hand there, they would have known because that's what they're trained to do is the FBI is trained to look at a scene and be able to tell, um, you know, just by looking, it's crazy how well they're trained. But they can look at a scene and they can say, okay, they can actually start doing their hypothesis. And then once they start getting the evidence, they can start weeding through it and actually building a, um, I say case, not for court, but just for what happened there. Um, I've got a friend that my son went to school with. She is at Quantico uh, now training for the FBI. Um, I'm not going to give out her name, but um, I had talked to her a little bit about this. And she, I'm going to bring her on, um, whether your channel or mine. Um, she's agreed to come on and she, I sent her the info. So she's working on it now, but um, I think that um, the way she explained it, they, it would definitely, they know whether those bodies were put there after the fact or if they were murdered there by the crime scene. Yes, I do. Um, I can't remember where either, but I think they have. I want to. I want to say something to IVI real quick. I want to address this. Um, I did watch that video you sent me. Um, I don't really pay too much attention to psychics or tarot card readers and that. However. Um, I want to address this as well. Um, with everything put out on Facebook and YouTube, I think, I do believe there are some that may have gifts, but I also believe that some see everything out there on Facebook, all the rumors, and then on YouTube as well, and then they go off of that and put out. But I do want to say that there were some interesting things that he said. Guys, this is that tarot card reader, the um, Aphrodite, whatever his name, I can't remember his name. Um, Aphrodite? Yeah. Um, he said... A few things that did interest me. Um, mm -hmm. but then, he freaked out. He freaked out and shut it down. But then he didn't. There's a 
couple things he didn't, you know, he said he didn't think it was in, in it. Um, the thing I didn't agree with, but this is my own opinion. He said he didn't think it was intentional, intended to go that far. But I believe it, it was. I believe they were targeted. At least one of the girls were targeted. And he did say that. And then he said, this is somebody that lives a double life. I believe that. Mm -hmm. He said he thought it was somebody. Um, in um, high standards, high, you know, and then he said money. And he said all of those things many times. That did get my attention. But that's all over Facebook. And it's all over. I mean, you know. Right. I like the ones when they start, they're like, oh, I don't know anything on this. But they come. <laughs> I don't know. Um, hey, Nick, can you do me a favor and do a check on people in the room, please? If you don't mind. Got a couple popping in and out. So I want to, I, if I do anything on my computer, I don't want to cause any havoc on you, Ange, the noise. <laughs> I'm just looking at the comments, make sure I didn't. Um, but Dana, uh, you know, you are right about the cases and stuff. And that's why I don't do Delphi that much anymore. Hardly. I mean, I don't do, we do tend to sometimes chit chat about it, but I don't cover it. And that's why we do other cases. Um, and if you would like to talk, you know, send me something. Um, I am not as good as Gray Hughes. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. You know, I love people that are naturals at this. This is what they do. They love it. You know, I mean, they are naturals with doing the research. And, um, you know, a lot of these people do it full time. And if I had full time to do it, I'd be great, too. <laughs> Instead, you get just get me. I agree, Ivy Rose. Yeah. I agree, too, on that, Ivy. I think that... Um, I think that the investigation was halted. Um, okay, thanks, Nick. Sharon, wasn't that the other one? Not Bella's, but um, wasn't it the other uh, YouTuber? Her son was killed. I don't think, was it Bella? I thought it was the other YouTuber. I can't think of her name. I don't watch a lot of her, but. Okay, Nick. Good point, Nick. Partial touch. Yeah, I, I that's sad for her. It really is, but I I I didn't think that was I I don't I that's the uh, it's the other YouTuber. Yeah, I saw hers too. But I'm did sure. Bella's too? Bella's what? One of my son. Names. They're saying it was Bella's son that got killed. But I thought it was the other YouTuber that lost her son like two months ago. Yeah, Christine, that's okay. They count. Thumbs down, thumbs up, guys. They all count. <laughs> they count. They sure do. 
I've got three now. No biggie. Um, I, I did want to say, though, you can't, from the Weber's, certain place at the Weber's, you can see the crime scene. Matter of fact, I mean, in February, you could see it from the bridge. Because the trees aren't, you know, foiled. Because when I was down there, I could, the trees were foiled, and I could see Greeno and them walking across just barely because the trees were foiled. If they weren't, I mean, you know. If you weren't paying attention, if you weren't looking for something, you wouldn't be looking over there. I'm just saying you could see that area from there. Yeah, Wom's listening. Wombat's a man, Ivy. <laughs> Ivy, I said, my gut tells me so. Yes. Joy, congrats on that grandbaby. You're a grandma. <laughs> Have you seen the baby yet, Christine? David says, washing machine going. I didn't do no laundry today. Um... Webb. Who's Webb? Yes, I've never heard of him, I don't think. Weber? Weaver. Wasn't it Weavers? Was it supposed to be Weaver? No, Dana says, I don't watch Webb either, but his video was recommended to me, so I watched his video. Oh, okay. And was Sorry. Horrified. I'm not heard of him. Sharon's folding clothes. George Webb. Huh. I never heard of him. Me either. But I guess that's a good thing. Right. If it scared the, or Dana was horrified. I debated on cooking tonight. I'm hungry. But my husband made, well, we had chili the night before. Then my husband made some awesome ham and beans. I mean, like, Never, a way I've never even heard of it. So I figured, well, probably shouldn't cook because we got these leftovers. But you ever have a bunch of leftovers and you really don't want to eat that? You want to eat something else? But I didn't cook anything else, so I guess I'm going to eat that. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> Ellie did say some stuff that was leaked early on. I think that's why people speculate so much or believe the DE text messages. And that could be like, it could be. And if you think about it, when you have that many people out there looking, um, as humans, our curiosity um, over does the, um, I don't know, I don't know how to say that, never mind, squirrel. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. The father is being weird about visits. Who, um, Christine? The baby. Her grandbaby. Oh. Really? Oh, are they about the COVID or something? And just so you know, just let the father know that the, um, my doctor just said it today. Kids usually just get a runny nose from it. It's, it's the adults they're concerned about in people high risk more so. 
than children. And yes, children can get it, obviously. But, um, oh, do you, do you pronounce it, Robert, Leah? Is that how they pronounce it? Yum. You guys are all talking food again. And them tacos sound delicious. I know. I was just thinking that. I had pizza. My husband ordered pizza. Oh, that sounds good, too. Yes, kids have died from it, it but it's a small percentage. Not that anybody should have to die from this, but um, the doctor told us today, um, and, and it's because I was with the family um, of my student, I was in there. So the mom was very concerned because one of her children was one of the direct contacts with the caretaker. Oh, Sharon, I, if, it's, if it's the right kind of pizza, I can do it got to be the right kind of pizza and uh, yeah i don't like to eat pizza all the time but i if it's the good if it's good this restaurant up here man i'll tell you they got the best food i mean oh and the other night when i said i was getting off of here and ordering potato boats i sure did too they're the oh. <laughs> it sounds good they are they're you know they're potato skins but they they're huge. They, I mean, they are huge and they make them so good. Right. Right. They were sloppy that night though. They must've slid all over their car. 40 kids. Yeah. I mean, he was saying that kids with, um, asthma and stuff like that, it's obviously going to affect a lot. Princess Leia. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I yeah, I feel like we're all going to be shutting down. I'm having a really I have to tell you guys, I'm really struggling with this. I'm really struggling. I felt like I was back on track, life was going back to normal, and it's just not, it's never going to be what our old normal is. It's going to be a new normal on this, but I have to tell you, if I let my anxiety go, guys, I'd be on top, I'd be standing on my head right now in misery. It's scary. It, it really is. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just try not to think about it. Right. So I mean, the, um, they, um, so with Delphi, I feel like the, I almost feel like the police like they don't have enough people to work on it or investigators um that even though they have specific people at some point i think they're gonna have to now i will say the guy that resigned and said he would come back if there was a change and he was re-elected back in or he was he came back so th I think there are things happening with Delphi, but they're being very tight-lipped about it. Now, who, 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 was, who was the um, gentleman that stepped down and said he would come back? Who was that? He would come back if there was any changes. Oh, I... Is that who that was? Mm-hmm. Okay. So right. he's... He's back now. But he's not, 
he's not really playing much part. I mean, I mean, I can't say that for sure. I don't know that really. But now we have the mayor stepping down, taking over Nick McClellan, the chief prosecutor. And um, he's going to be a judge now. Um, well, and I was going to ask you about that. What do you think? Um, do you think that's Delphi related or do you think it's because the judge, the other judge is off the bench and they need somebody up there? Well, that's what they're saying. I don't know. David, that's a really good point. I think it's at the stage where they've moved into other things. They will come back to it if a good lead comes in. And I think that... Um, and I watched an interview yesterday and she's really disappointed in them. I mean, how many cases get a video and a voice? It, I mean, other cases have been solved with far less. Exactly. Um, I was going to say something because I, I don't know if it was to somebody's comment or. Um, you okay, Ange? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh. Uh, oh, you asked about the invest. Um, um, I, yeah, I just couldn't remember his name. Sorry. Uh, Delphi. Um, They've got, okay, they've got Liggett and Hammond are the Delphi investigators. Okay. And then we've got two, I believe, ISP investigators here in Delphi working. Okay. And do you know, Ange, is the FBI still involved in it? Like their behavior analysis unit? I was told. And only say what you can say. I don't want you put on the limb here, but just I, say what I, you can say. I mean, it was all over that they backed out. And then I was told that they are no longer a a active in it. I mean, I'm just saying that's what I was told. And so in my thought of thought at the April presser, what'd they say? Who, who'd they say to call? Who'd they say in the ISP roadshow to call? Carroll County or ISP. I mean, sure. If you want to call your tips in the FBI, go ahead. I'm sure they're not going to turn you away, but FBI is not involved. A lot of people say they are, but they're not. Okay. Now, I was wondering now about I that. Know, I do know there. Well, I'm not going to say this. I'm not going to say this because I don't. I, I'm not. Never mind. So, in my opinion, if they're not involved anymore, maybe they have a suspect in mind and they're building a case. I mean, what do you all feel about that? I mean, is the FBI going to be involved when the arrest happens, though? That, yeah. We, you would think, wouldn't you? But I don't know. And like they said, and even Tobe said, and you can watch uh, Chuck Bronson's channel when him and uh, maybe now, maybe not now, maybe later, interviewed Tobe. Um, the ISP said they're... Carroll County's the lead, but we're the most active. And then when they went in to interview Tobe, they had the poster for Abby and Libby and the one for Flora. And Carroll County told, uh, Tobe told them the same thing. And then, you know, ISP's the lead on Flora, which people were giving Tobe a lot of black for the floor case and he's not that's that's isp's investigation yeah i was gonna say isn't that out of his jurisdiction or oh, no. no 
No, because he's sheriff of Carroll County, but I. Oh, okay. They do it by county there. Yeah. Okay. But ISP took the investigation right from the start. I mean, from the get go. Yeah, he did too. Chuck said, "Well, that looks like you." He uh, he was joking, uh, because then he said that he'd gotten accused of looking like somebody when he was in a town too. Right. <laughs> and I'm just gonna be honest. Some of the questions they asked Tobe, I, but Tobe's such a nice guy, but I would have said that's none of your business. I mean, he was like, "So how much you make? How much you get for this? How much you get for that? How much money is it?" And I don't know, you know, because they say there's. By law, they have to answer those questions. I don't know. I'm not no cop person like they are, but. Right. I don't know. I wouldn't have answered some of those questions. I didn't think it was any of their business. So the FBI guy said if it leads to out of jurisdiction, they could provide assistance. April Presser said a local. Which, by the way, is pretty scary for the people living there. That's right. They must, they must be on eggshells. I can't even imagine. That's right. And by the way, that's, that's when I was told that, um, that's when I was advised that FBI. Is and in a sense, the FBI guy contradicted Kelsey because Kelsey was asked, are you afraid for your own safety? And she said, she started to say no not if and then she stopped and said no so that was almost what a year and a, a year year and a half ago right joy that's what i thought and and that's why i think that cat makes some sense too is is this person already in jail? I think because they know, I mean, my opinion, and it could, and it, even if it is Thomas Bruce, they still would know. All right. I think. Um, I did watch the crime pursuit and they feel they know who it is. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't have any, I don't have Somebody any. told me to go to that. I had never seen them. I have no use for Ed Bounds. Not. I, who for is one, he? For one, because he said terrible things about Ron. Another, he's done some terrible things to a certain family that I advocate for. Um, he's, he's. I don't have any use for him, but yeah, I saw those interviews too. Um, so what are they saying? They know, they know, they know who it is. Oh, thank you, Joy. I knew it was something like that. If it is who we think it is, no, is what she said. That statement right there was very telling for me. So who do they think it is or did they say? They did not say. In, I mean, in one of those videos? Um, where did I see that, Joy? Um, she was being interviewed. And I don't remember. It's been a long time. I can't remember. I mean, um, crime pursuit. Oh, no. I don't remember who, if they thought, if actually GK is who they think it is. They, they created this case, uh, you know, a scenario and they think it's GK. Uh, uh, the, the scenario they created like um, a year or so ago or right after Nicole's murder, that scenario. Yeah. 2019. You can't even see. He's saying that Garrett Kurtz had the girls held up in Ron's barn and was watching the search from there. Yeah, and I, I did not agree with that. You can't, you can't see his woods from standing out 
right even in the pasture if there was a search down there you can't even see the crime scene somebody in here clarified it the other night jerry rocks he's so full of crap he's never even been on ron's property he's never even talked to ron and if he says he has he's a dead gone liar and that's why she kept saying well we'll talk about the ed stuff okay because garrett garrett's very upset with him about that because that i can 100 percent say did not happen for one, Ron don't even have a freaking window in his barn. But even if he did, you couldn't see, you got to walk clear across all them acres of his pasture to get to his woods. And then you got to stand at the top and then you got to even walk a few steps to even see the crime scene from there. Oh, really? You wouldn't see the search. They were, they were searching clear down there. You wouldn't even see the search from... The middle of his pasture, let alone in his driveway, at his garage, and his barn don't have a window. That dude is, I'm shutting my mouth because. Yeah, I think that, me. I I'm think they were. My testimony and be hypocritical. I and think just, that they, um, that's I'm when just, a lot of people started with the, oh, they were moved there. They were taken from there and then brought back because. They also stated. Well, in, that's not why I thought it. That is not oh, why I thought that. Oh, really? Because I've never believed it's Garrett Kurtz. And not because I'm defending him. I just don't believe it's Garrett Kurtz. I don't believe it's anybody that has been mentioned. But. It's not impossible for. I mean, I am. I'm just going to say cats. And then Cog's findings are very intriguing. Yes, very other much. That, other than that, I don't believe it's anybody that's been mentioned. Ivy Rose, I like Mad Ange. <laughs> well, I knew the minute he mentioned in that video, too, when he said something about a knife, I knew they were going to say, run with that, too. Oh, yeah. But everybody thinks they were killed with a knife because it's all over everywhere. And then Michaela supposedly told him. But. You know, and the reality is we don't know. We don't. No one, know. No we one know. knows. They're just, they're specul speculating. I had never seen them. Somebody told me to go watch check it out so i did but I, as i was going through it i think they had a person in mind already somebody sent them to me i'll tell you why they're doing it they're trying what? to compete with open secrets yes that's what ed bounds always does then you see him jump in um justice for ray hannish's group when greeno was he 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 comes Oh, is that who that is? I had no idea. He come busting in there and says, we're going to start blah, 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 blah. And the family's like, oh, no, you're not. And booted his butt right out of there. Yeah. Hold on just a second. I got to step away for a sec. Give me a minute. Well, that's true, Ivy Rose, as far as we know. And even if they would have heard them that day, nobody would have thought anything of it because you hear gunshots all the time back there. I don't know how many times I've been at Ron's and hear gunshots. I mean, that's just like here. We hear gunshots all the time. And you know, that's the thing about the country. You hear gunshots. Somebody could be getting murdered, but you're not going to think a thing about a gunshot because you live in the country and people are always shooting their guns. And don't they do hunting in those woods all the time? So even if there was gunshots, people probably wouldn't even think twice about it. Well, yeah, that too, if it's deer season, I guess, or certain seasons. I mean, because people hunt for different things. Dana says, Ed mm. Bound wanted me to join his team, and I did for one day. But after seeing the stuff they said about others, I split like a banana. Yeah. Dana, you're on our team now. 
And Dana's a sweetheart. Everybody in here is lovely. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get go off like that, but I just am like, man, I, I as soon as I somebody I didn't know about either, somebody sent them to me, but as as soon as I I just thought he's just trying to compete with open secrets. He's going to think he's going to get some dirt or something and get better. Well, I got news for him. Open secrets is, I don't know for sure who she is, but she's good. She's good. I, I like her channel too, because she's got a variety of stuff like, dates for around the world and different cases and things and <laughs> Nick I'm glad I don't know who old Eddie is <laughs> I can't believe you don't haven't heard of him oh well now I will say though the one lady that did Angela Bartlow and this isn't the same lady, by the way, that did these interviews. But that lady was very good. And I, I'm not I'm not bashing this lady that did this interview either, but Ed's behind it, okay? Oh. I heard multiple shots today and I live in country. Oh. Not even hunting season. Some of us just like to shoot. Yeah, I lived in Camden, a small town, not in the country. And I'd hear gunshots. Still, nobody thought of me, you know. <laughs> I feel like um, GK wants to talk and wants to be heard. Hi, Carol, Carol. And you know, that's what I think too. Honestly, I do. I think he's, he just calls people to talk to people. Most, and like most people when they're in jail, they don't have anything to do. Hey, There's nothing to do in there except talk. If somebody's going to reach out to them. I'll talk to you. And I mean, and I really don't think he has anything to hide as far as the Delphi case. And as far as Nicole, I think he's being truthful there. Him and Ashley, I mean, you know, they found her DNA everywhere. Her DNA wouldn't be all over everything if she wasn't involved too. And I think they all need to go up for it. Now he needs to just tell the truth about Ray. And I hope he has. Now, the thing that got me is, um, and, and I think that's why people are curious about GK, is because um, he, I guess, on the 15th, went to his mom's. And, I mean, that could be a rumor, too. But he did say, didn't he say he was cleaning up from spice, went cold turkey? That would put me in bed for five days, I would think. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, I know it sounds like I'm defending the guy, but I'm not. But I, my son's a recovering addict. Just because you're an addict doesn't make you a killer. Just because you're recovering or trying to, or you're withdrawing, I mean doesn't mean you went and killed somebody. And by the way, I did forget, but it reminded me when I watched that video or one of them, his mom did say at court that she can't stand that girl and that she was lying. But, you know, I know it's his mom and of course she's going to protect him. So yes, take that with a grain of salt. But Again, neither of those things make you a killer. And if he was high on spice, again, I don't see how he could have carried this out without leaving a good amount of evidence. Right, right. 
Ivy says she is good. A lot of people have criticized her for being nice to Garrett. But for one, he's still a person. And two, he's not going to talk if she's mean. Well, no, he's not. How are you supposed to get information from somebody if you haul ass and start accusing him and all that? He's not going to talk. Nick is going to give his house away if it's GK. <laughs> I'm closing down my YouTube. Yeah. I'm probably closing down my YouTube if it's Thomas Bruce, too. Hi, Carol, Carol. How are you? Oh, Carol, Carol's funny. <laughs> I'm moving and looking for a new house. Where is it? <laughs> Right, Ivy. I mean, just because they're a drug addict doesn't make them a murderer. Although that second sketch looked a lot, looked similar to him. See, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that second sketch looks like anybody. Anybody they put up against it. Not just, not Garrett, not anybody. And just like the older sketch, I don't think, you know, just like everybody says, the first sketch looks like Mike, the second sketch looks like Cody. And that's still swinging around. Or Mike Brevard or whatever. That's just my opinion. I mean, I don't know. I do need new glasses. <laughs> Yet he was arrested on the 27th for spice. What's so what's that saying, Sharon? I'm sorry, I just have to ask because I don't understand what it means. Yeah, I mean, not that drugs can't cause you. I mean, I, I know there are cases where people have been, you know. you know, in episodes and, and have done it, but I just don't see how he would have been able to clean it up or not leave. He's too sloppy. I mean, look how quickly, you know, how, how dumb he was with Nicole's murder, how quickly he admitted to it, how dumb with Ray's murder, even though the cops were sloppy and messed it up. And how quickly he admitted to it, even though he says it was an accident. Dana, I really haven't. Nope. No. Sometimes it, it, I, you know, that's why I've taken Mondays and Wednesdays off. Those are my Bible study nights. So because it does get exhausting um, mentally, you know, to transfer. But nope, I have not thought about closing it down. I know some people want that. It's not gonna happen. Because I, I enjoy you all too much. Yeah, I was always wondering what um, spice was too. It's I synthetic. Thought... It's synthetic marijuana, and it was legal at one time. They sold it in gas stations and everywhere. But then it became illegal. But people chose to smoke that instead of marijuana because they didn't drug test for it. They didn't drug test for it at employers or probation or house arrest and things like that so they would choose to smoke that well it's very addicting and it's dangerous too i mean um it's dangerous it has killed people put people in the hospital left them in comas or affected them really bad i mean left them just almost like vegetables um but now they do test for it. 
now they test for it. Yeah, and the guy that they're talking about in the chat here in Florida, he almost ate a guy's face off, and he was doing spice. Are you? Or that are was you like, I think that was like two or three years ago. That was close to us. Flocka. Flocka Miami. Flocka. Miami. No, I mean, that's, I think you're talking about Flocka. Oh, is that? Yeah, Flocka. Oh, okay. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it makes people go really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It made its way to Indiana, but. Oh, it did? Mm -hmm. Now, how do people get that stuff? Like, who makes this stuff? I, I mean, is it cheaper than regular drugs? Is that why people go for it? Like, I don't get that. But it can make you crazy. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Not something I want to try. I, that's... Are we buffering or just... Crime, crime, you're buffering. Uh oh. You're back. Oh, she left or got kicked off. Let me read these comments real quick. She's back. I'm trying to get through this. Yeah, Flock is completely different, but that's what she was talking about. Okay, let me get her back on here. Oh, you guys realize we've been on here for almost three hours. And we ain't going for six. Dana, Ivy I, Ivy Rose, some of you may not have been with me when I first started, but we went six hours one night, and we ain't doing it tonight. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Yeah, so um wow, sounds like some serious stuff. Yeah. Really and serious. and if you think about it, it's really hard. I mean, even though it can make you crazy and give you lots of energy, it at some point could he have done this crime without leaving a mess? If you know what I mean, leaving more than just what's there behind. Yeah. Another thing with spice is you have to smoke it like every, what is it? Um, Cause I mean, I know I had friends, her daughter was addicted to it. Um, another friend, her son was, um, and you, you have to smoke it like at 15, 20 minutes and, um, yeah. So it, I'm going to ask a stupid, bad. I'm going to ask a stupid question here. When you say synthetic. Fake. More like, huh? yes. I mean, is that what it means? Fake? Yes. Yeah, fake? Fake, yeah. Yeah, because oh. like you have synthetic urine too. People would um, use synthetic urine to try to pass a urine test. So that's... Oh, like, okay. I, I guess would, I'm kind of stupid in that area. <laughs> I would say that means fake, right? Because when I take my son to a drug test, it would say, you know... In so it's way. not real. It's not the real cannabis no. that. No, but it's very dangerous. It's like okay, like I heard something about a bonsai tree or something once or something. I don't know, but it's really bad. I mean, like they did a report on the news once from our local hospital, 
and how dangerous it is and how they had to revive people before and sometimes they didn't succeed. Wow. Yikes. Sharon says they buy urine on Amazon for $35. Oh my God. <laughs> people really do that? <laughs> Ivy says, I think he would have spilled it by now. And I I mean, I do too. I do. I think he would have. But who knows? I just want it solved. I just, you know, I want the families to have to stop waiting for justice and I want them to stop going through what they're going through and I just want it to be over. Right? Ick. <laughs> I can't know. I mean, I've heard of people having friends pee in a cup for them. Yeah. Ew, what? <laughs> Drinking <laughs> urine? That's disgusting. Well, if you were stranded on an island, dying of thirst, what would you drink? The salt water? The well, water, that's a little different. Or your own <laughs> urine. I wouldn't. I think I'd just die of hydration, man. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> I would learn how to strain the ocean water and get the salt out. <laughs> And that's if I don't get attacked by the sharks and the boxed fish. Oh, wait, I'm not in Australia. <laughs> and everybody always said, well, if we ever have to live like the walking dead, you know, because I'm like, no, I mean, I will just die. I will. Because I, yeah. I will not eat a person. I will not eat a dog. I will not eat a cat. No, I'm sorry. They're like, oh, you will if you get hungry enough. Well, no. My husband wants to know if you'd eat a squirrel. He just said it. He doesn't even know our, our that my joke is squirrel with you. And he goes, would she eat a squirrel? I mean, I probably would if I, but then I would sit there and think, I mean, you know, I'm OCD. So I'd sit there and think about, gosh, it's not even, you know, cleaned or it's not. Right. You know, I mean, I couldn't even eat a deer. I can't even eat deer now. Yeah. Oh, the Bambi. Can't eat Bambi. Oh, good night. Which one's leaving? Ivy. Rose. Good night, Ivy Rose. Thank you for coming, honey. Sweet dreams. Grass is the best. <laughs> I'd be a vegetarian. I'd eat the grass first because there is what? Rain water in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't eat our grass where the dogs have peed. <laughs> Dennis's grass is the best. I would, I would drink rainwater. Oh yeah, that I would do. Lake says I love venison. Yum. I used to, but. Good night, Catherine. Oh, good Thank night. You. Thank you for coming, Catherine. Good night. Sweet dreams. Man, you guys have been some champs tonight, man. Hanging They've in been, everybody's been really respectful and really good. It's been a great conversation. And these guys always are. But, man, I'll never forget that six-hour stream we did, man. I was like, what? I can't. I know. <laughs> and then people still didn't want me getting off. They're like, no, stay. My hu my hubby eats pickled pig's feet. Yeah. Gross. Look at the horses, how healthy they are. Well, horses eat straw, though. And I mean, hey. Yeah, hubs. We fed our horses good. Ew. No way, Sharon. Mm -mm. Ew. <laughs> Ugh. 
It oh, just uh, pig's feet just doesn't sound good to me. Like if I was going to, even when I go fishing, if I see something like that and then cook it, I have a really hard time eating it. I, I just, I can't catch it and then eat it. I can eat fish. I love seafood. Well, yeah, as long as I don't see the eyes. We saw bunches of cow tongues at the store the other day. I was like, no way. Ew, <laughs> air on the feet, yuck. <laughs> yeah, I would have a hard time with that. <laughs> right. I, and you know, my dad worked in a packing plant and as a kid, he would take us to work with him. He was a mechanic and um, you know, I saw a lot of that and to this day, my husband takes the meat off the bones for me. I can't like eat chicken on the bone or turkey on the bone. Neither I have. Can. Neither can my stepson, my youngest. He won't eat it on the bone. Yeah, no, me either. My husband's really nice. He he, he takes the meat off for me. Bulls ball. <laughs> sure. I just saw that. Here, go by daddy. <laughs> oh, goodness. Rocky Mountain. Oh. <laughs> Carol's, Carol's picking between her cats. Which one has to go first? <laughs> <laughs> Now, my husband likes oysters. Ew. Well, guys, I think I'm going to have to sign off. I'm hungry, and my dogs, I know they're dying to go. Me too. Three hours. Woo. Time flies. It, it. I swear, when we get on here and we get talking, it just goes so fast. I know it. I'm sorry if I if we bored any of you guys, but thank you guys so much for hanging it with us, man. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Oliver. Oliver says, Mom, feed me. How's your, before you go, how's the beagle in the back? Is the family taking care of it now? I think so. I haven't seen him. Okay, good. Good night, IVI. Thanks for coming. Good night. Good night, everybody. I'll sign off now so you can say good night to everybody. Okay, crime. Thanks for coming on. Good night, everybody. Sweet dreams. Thanks. Good night, John Boy. Oh, my husband said good night, John Boy. <laughs> good night. So, guys. Thank you so very much for hanging with me tonight and crime, especially this long. I did not realize it, but it was wonderful as usual. And you guys know I so appreciate it. Now, I won't be on tomorrow. It's Bible study night, but I'll see you guys Thursday. All righty. So sweet dreams, everybody. Have a great day tomorrow, and I'll see you all back on Thursday. Okay, I was just peeking at the last comment there. All right, guys, sweet dreams. God bless. I'll see you on Thursday.